There's one. I got a cottontail. Show it into the crack, boys. Earthworm. Kind of weird to find an earthworm. You wouldn't think there'd be up near the surface that much. I'm gonna lose it. Shoot. I'm rubbing two sticks together. <laughs> Check it out, guys. <laughs> Oh, I'm lost again in the wilderness. This is going to be my most ambitious survival challenge yet. Reason being is because I only got one tool. My nemesis. This is the axe. It's one of the things that I've avoided using for a long time. Preferring to instead use multiple tools like a saw, a knife. The axe is one of the things I have left behind. I'm gonna get into why I decided on the axe a little bit later. Of course, I've got my trusty 22. I'm not counting that as my one item, my one survival item. This is something you should just have with you all the time. And I've avoided bringing this around with me too. And I've paid the price, trust me. I've tried all kinds of different traps from snares to rat traps, uh, to foothold traps for coyote, and they've all failed. So today I'm gonna to be doing some active hunting for some different animal species that we have in season right now for the winter. I don't have any means of fire. So this is going to provide everything for me, including cleaning game if I manage to get anything, firewood, shelter building. So it's, it's a, gonna be a no food, no water survival challenge. I'm gonna tick one box off immediately, and that's water. I don't have a boring device with me to make any water, so I'm gonna be eating snow throughout the day. I've got my big poncho on today. Conditions are such that it's freezing rain, light snow. These are the worst conditions to be in. I can already feel my butt getting wet. There's no way around it. I am going to get wet today. My gloves are going to get wet. I've only got one pair. I've only got what's on my back with me. Axe 22, and I gotta get everything done with to those two items. Now the axe is gonna make short work of some things, and it's gonna help me make a fire if I can get a friction fire started. That's gonna be my goal. It's a lofty goal, man, to start a friction fire from nothing at all, from just materials I'm gonna find around me in the forest. It's gonna be a tall order, trust me. I'm gonna make my best go at this challenge. Uh, if I don't end up with fire, I surely should be able to make a shelter at minimum. And if we don't get food, well, we've got the water box ticked off, so. We should probably get going while we got this light snow. This could switch at any time back to rain and then uh, we can get wet. First order of business, I'm gonna collect a little bit of dry cedar. Oh. Well, I'm already getting hot. I wanna avoid sweating, because uh, if I start sweating, then I gotta eat more snow. Oh. Of course, I'll take my jacket off and the chance of getting wet underneath. But it's powdery snow right now. So fluctuating between below freezing and above freezing temperatures. You can see what I'm doing here. So the idea is just to make a flat board. This idea came to me in a dream. As all good ideas come, I feel, I feel like when I sleep on something, the next morning I come to a, a little bit more clarity. So if you guys are trying to make a big decision, don't make an emotional one. Make one after a couple nights sleep. In fact, don't even think about it. When you wake up, you'll come to some conclusion. I have a tree here that's standing. It might not seem like a big deal to you, but what it's doing is holding the tree in a position that I can hew it very, very easily. If this was on the ground and I had to manipulate it, I'd probably use twice as much energy and probably lack about half the precision. Here you've seen a I made a nice thin board, flat board, and that's crucial when you're making a bow drill set. You're, you're your baseboard, your hearth board, should be as flat as possible. Depending on how big I make my spindle, I might only get like eight, nine, ten tries on this one board. So there we go, we got one step done. There's a hearth board, and I wanna feel how wet it is. You can kinda of do this by feel. One, put it up against your face, pick up to your lips. Feels pretty dry, it's not super dry, it's not bone dry, but it's pretty dry. And so that'll give us something to work with. We'll, if it's not 100% dry, uh, we'll, we'll dry it, put it that way. We have some ways to do that. Um, because it's part of the middle of the tree, we know, and it's because it's from a dead tree, we also know that it's protected from the elements on the inside. And so the chances of this wood being a lot drier than the outside wood 
is pretty good. As far as getting game too, that's one of those things that, you know, sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. All we can do is our best. Ah, well that was a, a, sh a poopy load, a poopy load full of carving. This is what I ended up with. You might wonder why I just don't get a thinner branch. And that's because the thinner branch might be wet all the way through. You can't just use a branch branch, that won't work. And so, um, we obviously still got some whittling left to do, which I'll do a little bit here in the tree trunk, because it's easy enough to hold <coughs> there. And, uh, but I want a nice long one, and the re there's a good reason for that. So I'll get lots of tries out of this. Make a short one, you get a few tries out of this. And this is about the right length I want. And then once our shelter's built, we can have a nice place to dry place, hopefully, to work on this. And uh, a fire is gonna be our only means, really, of being comfortable and cooking food, if we manage to get any. All right, well, I'm happy that's done-ish. Still lots to go. Hey guys, I'm liking that you're loving these survival challenges and there's a lot more to come, but I want to thank my sponsor. This is the Commuter 2 by Cove. It's really easy, just connect through Bluetooth and you're ready to go. This speaker's got some really cool features that you wouldn't expect and it puts out an awesome sound. It's got a seven hour run time, but check this out. A speaker actually breaks apart in half, so you basically get two speakers for the price of one. When you break the speakers apart, you get a pretty unique 360 degree surround sound. Some of you guys have asked me, what kind of music do I like? It's actually probably not what you think. I like remix and techno. I know it doesn't fit the bill, but I like the primitive tribe beats, and this speaker delivers. It can get pretty freaking loud. Every time I've come here, is the snares have been messed up. Now I know a lot of you guys have said you like to play my videos in the background, especially the longer ones, which is awesome. Thanks for that, appreciate it. Well, with this speaker, you can do just that, connect through Bluetooth, or you can play a podcast. Now, if you guys wanna get 67% off, use the code WB68, in the link I'll provide down in the description. That's the Commuter 2 by Cove. So I've got it sharpened at both ends. This will probably be the top end, I think. This will be the bottom end, so they can be a little bit more blunted. Top end we want pointy. Reduce the friction at the top, increase the friction at the bottom. She's getting wet. I'll be happy if I make smoke out of this, to be honest. If I make fire out of it, all the better. Well, that should show you the kind of conditions we're working in. Jacket's not warm in the inside, trust me, I'm not wearing it and that snow is melting. So we're now back to freezing rain, which you probably can't see on camera, but you don't see the puffy snow anymore, and you can tell that it's melting on the jacket. We multiplied our one survival tool into three survival tools, which is actually just two survival tools because the bow drill set is just, uh, you know, one tool, and it's incomplete. I still gotta grab a few more things. We'll get those along the way. I haven't managed to find a good place for a shelter yet, but I did find this uh, white birch and you can see the snow piling up on it along the sides here, which means it's gonna be completely soaked. But uh, birch does contain enough oils that that's, that's still gonna be valuable. I'm glad we're kind of in the middle between freezing and raining because I think once it gets dark, like later in the day, that the precipitation will change to straight snow. I didn't find what I'm looking for. This is going to be as good as I can get today, I think. It's a low, effort location there's uh three down trees two or three down trees one of them is a spruce and it's actually holding a little bit of snow on top and we can knock this off carefully so we don't get ourselves too too wet and i actually want to keep all as much snow as i can on top of there but if you can look down below here underneath there there's like a little hovel a little open space in there and i think if i just take the axe because that's all i have today no saw I, ha I can cut off the lower branches, stack them up on top, and then I can have this whole area here to work with. And then the snow that's in here, I should be able to get down to dirt. I will sacrifice my gloves today because I know getting down to dirt is gonna be crucial for getting the bow drill fire set.
Well, there's the kind of the beginnings of a shelter. It's not a full shelter yet, but I'm cozy and I'm blocking immediately a little bit of snow. Not a ton of snow, but a little bit, that's for sure. I'm gonna get rid of anything that's kind of in the way that might I might accidentally bump and have land on me. I can easily flash in a roof over here. And then obviously I'm gonna have the fire over here to my left hand side. And that way the smoke can bellow out. But it gives me a good working area here. I still need to collect bedding and a roof before I even think about drawing a fire at all. But I'm happy with that. It looks pretty good. It's kind of a natural, natural place to hide. I think a deer might like to hide in this little spot here too. Maybe we'll find one here at one point. It's a good little bedding area. So I'm gonna clear out a little bit more snow because I don't want the snow to pack where I'm gonna make the fire over here. We should be in good shape here if we can get a fire going. I did actually see a couple of red squirrels on the way in and there could always be a cottontail bumbling around. We might be able to kick one up out of the low-lying shrub or, you know, denned up somewhere. Because that's what they like to do during the day. These cottontails like to hide in a little, little cubby holes. And sometimes you can find where they hang out, but I'll keep an eye out and see if I don't spot one. It's an earthworm. Kind of weird to find an earthworm. You wouldn't think there'd be up near the surface that much. I don't really have any idea what earthworms do during the winter. But it seems like they would go down deeper than that, but I guess the frost line is not too deep. It looks like a little red worm. It's pretty healthy to eat, I think. Well, they could contain parasites. Should I eat this now or should I save it until later? I think the idea would be maybe to cook it, give it a go, wash it off in the snow. That's where I draw the line. I don't eat anything that's not cooked. If this was cooked, I'd put it in a soup and eat it. You can see I dug down to dirt. You should always dig down to dirt if you can. It's a good idea to make soil contact. Oh, I'm having a little bit of a hard time feeding everything in. This is where I want to cover and uh, shoving branches in through the, the inside not working as well. I got a little bit of a matrix here forming. These are mostly branches that didn't have any greenery on them. They're kind of tucked in. But I think I might have to go to the back of the shelter here and then work in. I don't know. I'm looking at this one. I might be able to just finesse them in there. I think a saw would make me able to do some more precision work, you know. <laughs> I just got these big giant branches here. But we'll see what we can do with them. I think we, if we weave them up and through, we might be able to spread them back out a little bit. Here we go. I don't think we're going to end up with anything that's perfect, but we are going to do our best given the conditions and the materials we have. I'm looking for a spot where I can curl up in a ball back here and ride this out. Oh, that looks pretty good. It's not perfect, but you know, if I stumbled across this in the forest, I'd be like, okay, that's good enough. I'm just gonna leave it like that. I got a pile of spruce here, and I'm gonna be smart. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a seat first. So I'm gonna pile it all in the same spot for a place to sit, sit and work. So this grass isn't exactly dry at the moment. <laughs> There's snow all mixed in there, but snow mixed in there is better than <laughs> sitting on straight snow. <laughs> so I made myself a little beautiful nest. What I will end up doing is tucking back further under this tree because it's giving me a pretty strong break. If I could find anything else that was solid, I would add back here as well. And then as you can see, I could easily crawl up, curl up in a ball here like so. You know, I'll make a nice little headrest and I can stay pretty comfortable. So I'm actually very impressed with that. I don't, wasn't sure this was going to turn out at one point, but uh, it's a nice little nest. It's out of the wind with this backdrop here. And we still don't have a fire and we, we still have any food. And the only water that we have is, well, snow. So we got, uh, we got our shelter. This is all I'm doing. A quickie shelter to save some time to do other things. Okay, time to take a little bit of a break.
settle down. I'm not sweating. I'm more wet than than sweating. I am like I'm pretty much soaked through, but I've I've kept my jacket uh, dry. Well, we got a good uh, bit of firewood here. It's mostly surface wet, which is not a problem. It's dry in the middle, but it's uh, it's gonna take a lot of energy to get it to the combustion temperature. And we got our yellow birch here, which is also wet. And we're gonna put it not quite at the bottom. We're gonna kind of intersperse it a little bit, like a little bit of a lasagna. I need a little bit of a board here that I can work the bow drill set on, because if I put it down in the snow, obviously it's just gonna soak up ton of moisture so I'm going to cut off just a little short section from wet woods fine just enough so I can prop it up you guys get a good sense of just how well protected I am in here it's made a big difference and it smells wonderful in here I don't know what it is if it's the spruce or the birch or just kind of like a mixture of everything but it smells like it just smells like I don't know it's like an earthy tree mix not quite like Christmas, but pretty close. I love it. See the difference there? Like this is wet here, and then this is dry underneath. But it doesn't stay that way. It's almost like there's a lot of moisture just in, in the air itself. So I am doing my best to kind of... <laughs> what a mess. Anyway, that's that. So the hearth board, should, you should try to make that flat as possible. You guys probably already know that. And then your spindle. Here I've got it whittled down kind of a good, good bit. You can see there's actually a knot at this end here, which is troublesome because you want that to be nice and pointed. Cedar will give you almost everything you need when it comes to making a friction fire. But uh, a tinder bundle just out of cedar is it's not a good idea. You should mix it with multiple different things. And I'll show you that in a second. I think I've got it to a point where, you know, it's not too, too, it's not super loose. It's not super tight. So I think that'll be okay. And then I got to make a notch somehow, which I guess I'm going to make with the, <laughs> with the ax as well. It's going to be tricky. This guy's in my way. There we go. And then we can do a burn in and see what happens here. See if we don't get some smoke or see if we don't just uh, tough this one out. So that should fit in there with the top on the top, the top on the top, the bottom on the bottom. <laughs> okay, that's a little bit, a little bit tight. The rope might expand a little bit. It's not too, too bad. If you find a dead cedar, you'll find bark like this. And that means the tree is, you know, it's dying. And on the underside here, is a layer of very fibrous materials. And what you can do is you can take a knife if you have it. Uh, in this case, I use the ax. And I, what I've done is I've run it over the surface. And my ax is wet. I run it over the surface like this and that'll shred the fibers. I don't know if you can, this one I kind of shredded down pretty, pretty low. And you can see the fibers forming right there. You guys see that? It's almost like I'm making uh, wood beard, beard hair. Super dry material right there. Um, that's just a small section of it, obviously. But when you combine it with a big mound of it, what you end up with is something that's super dry. And this is my preferred material. So there's a little bit of birch fibers mixed in there. And uh, I'll work to add a little bit more. I don't mind putting a full one in there. Uh, it won't light. It won't ignite as good. But I do want those little fine ones in there 
where I'm gonna put the ember. I'm gonna put the ember right in the middle there and then I'm gonna fold it up real tight. I can feel that the spindle's wet. But you never know. Cedar's one of those things that you guys maybe underestimate. Let's see what happens. It's gonna take longer than a minute probably. Unless it's uh unless everything's working really well. I can't believe we actually have smoke right away. That's just the power of cedar right there, man. Crazy. <coughs> so we've got our burn in. It's good enough. Now it is working better than I thought. I'm actually able to saw with the ax a little bit too, which I wasn't sure if that would work in my mind. One tool, and I know some of the sticklers out there are probably gonna be like, well, he did have a gun and he had a piece of rope. So I don't know if it's one tool. Well, I don't care. We do have some uh, stuff forming here, but it's not, it's not falling down into the crack. So this notch is not deep enough. It's pretty simple. Don't push things. Take your time. Okay, we got enough. We got enough there, we're gonna light it. Okay, small break, small break. Making that shelter's kind of killed me. Small break, small break. I wanna get a little bit more of that stuff collected there. You know, show it into the crack, boys. Okay. Oh, I don't have much left. Okay. I should go again, but I'm gonna check it. I think I have enough smoke there. You guys see? So I'm gonna give it some puffs. I still see smoke. If that smoke ever stopped coming out of there, I would uh, go back to the drill right away so I didn't lose any heat. Whoa, that's not much there. I'm gonna lose it. Shoot. Uh, it's not quite out, but it's mostly out. So. That's my mistake, I didn't go to 60. I don't have 60 in me after building the shelter. And the moisture in the air is killing me too. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, okay, I got nothing left. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, barely there. There's like a very small tinge of, dude, it might go. It broke apart where the fire is. There it is. It was buried. There's too much. There it is. You guys see that smoke coming up? I I bare, unburied it. Look at that. Look at that. It was buried. Look at that smoke coming. You see that? <laughs> I got it. That was crazy. It was like hidden underneath an, an overlay. So it was like suffocating because of the moisture in the material. It was, uh, it wasn't able to get an ox oxygen, the, the moisture from the, the fibers in the material. You can see, you should see that, that smoke coming up now. We're gonna take all this extra stuff here, that's kind of splashed out, and we're gonna slowly add it to that pile. 
then we can make a much 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 bigger ember we can let it sit here because what it has to do is it has to consume all of the material that are down there before it will go out completely as long as we don't put it out by knocking it over or getting a drop of water in there okay I want to show you guys if you can't see it yet I'm going to show you I'll get all that extra material in there it's all good stuff you guys see that smoke there okay I'm going to make a nice ball I'm going to make a ball of all that material and we're <coughs> Ooh, it's smoky. Ooh, it's hot too. Okay, let's get, in case we have to try again, move this stuff out of the way. You guys see that smoke going? Okay. So, we obviously don't want to drop this. If we drop this, it's game over. All right, we'll make our ball, and then we can dump some stuff on top, but we do want to make sure that it stays together. Okay, so the clock is ticking, but not as much as you would think. So we got our, oh, excuse me, we got our tinder bundle here. I don't want that big piece in there. I can put it aside. Okay, you guys see? See how we're going here? Okay, so now we're gonna add this into the bundle, into the middle of the bundle. Okay, we just want it to fall out nice and gently. Here we go. Okay, it's in there. It's hot. Ooh, it's hot. Ooh, it's hot. Ooh, it's hot. We like that. And then we want to make contact. That's why we, we use those cedar shavings. You can use grass shavings. You can use any kind of material that you can get in a fine, dry fiber. So you think I'm messing around, but I'm not. I'm actually trying to, I'm trying to orient it so that it gets into the nest properly. You can see? And then I'm, then I'm going to kind of smother it a little bit. Not too, too much. Leave a little bit of an air escape here. Okay, so we can sit in there, still getting oxygen, still smoking. Okay, we've got a transfer, transfer piece here. Okay, that's good. Now, now we're going to try to get the flame going. So we want most of our material to be up on the top, which of course we didn't know which was the top before. Okay, hopefully it doesn't go out here. Okay, ready? Start blowing. Every time I do this, it's just utter magic. Rubbing two sticks together, man. Rubbing two sticks together. Come on, light, light. On light, 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 light. Fucking light. Go, go, go. Okay, okay. Now somehow I gotta bring you guys over here. Okay, there you go. Okay, you guys are good enough there. That's it, that's all I can do. Come on, light, 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 light. <laughs> yes! Ooh, that's awesome! Okay, get this on top here. Yes! I freaking did it! <laughs> oh, that makes me so pumped. Oh, look at this. Okay, we're gonna put a bit, bit more sticks on here. We got some sticks piled in here. Sorry, guys, you're kind of in the way a little bit, but that's okay. Kind of in the way, kind of in the way, kind of in the way. Oh, we should have been. Should have been built more prepared here, but I didn't really think all this through because I didn't think it was going to happen. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. I get this going. This is a critical moment because we got to dry the wood on top. Okay, good. 
Oh, she's gonna go. Dry, baby, dry. Dry and catch, dry and catch. Yes! Sweet! Whew, that's a smoky fire, but that's okay. <laughs> this is one of the hardest conditions in the world to start a fire. Just around the freezing point, everything covered in water, but we managed to find two dry things in the woods by basically boring into the middle to find that dry wood. And we've made a nice brush fire here, which is perfect because all those tops are drying off right now. Half of this is smoke and the other half is straight steam. So what we're gonna do at the risk of potentially getting into our shelter here is just piling this as high as we can until we get a good bed of coals. So that's gonna be the next challenge. And after that, we hunt around here, see if we can't get ourselves some food. Yes! Oh man, that makes me so freaking pumped. I did not think that fire was happening. Not for a second. <laughs> oh, I kind of had no choice of where to put that fire. Um, obviously it's a little big right now. <laughs> uh, you probably con you're concerned about me torching my shelter, but I'm not yet because I'm watching how, how it's behaving here, the crackling, because there's a ton of moisture in the cedar leaves not so much in the actual body of the tree as long as it's a dead tree but you can see it's just singeing but i am keeping an eye on it i'm actually going to let this die down now but i i didn't want to risk losing it because this is my lifeline now this is my food essentially if i manage to catch something i can actually cook it out here on this fire and so i want to make sure that's also going to keep me company and it's going to keep me warm throughout the night but what i'm saying is i can't actually get by my can't get by my fire right now to get inside my shelter, but I didn't want to put it like in the shelter or at the back of the shelter because then it would really burn. And over the over the course of the day, this is actually going to melt a little bit or dry, I should say, and then it's going to be more at risk of a fire. So I'm going to have to switch yowgers. I'm going to have to switch over to uh, some some smaller wood, drier wood, um, bigger logs, I should say. But I do want to get this area burnt out here. So that it holds cold and that, that means getting rid of a lot of the snow and it's doing its job it's doing exactly what it should be doing right now Whew, you don't know how much of a relief that fire is <laughs> i really thought this whole cha challenge was going to be a failure oh, but now my scope is all messed up full of water this is just a rigor 22. what we can go after now is uh rabbit Although they might not come out till after dark unless we can we can scare one up. Or we can go after red squirrel. We can pick off a crow maybe. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> I should make sure this fire is good though. Make sure I can see through the scope. Man, is it fogged up. It's so humid out here right now, it's ridiculous. I don't even know if that fog is on the outside of the scope or on the inside. I can I can make it make it through a little bit. Not, uh, not super easily, but she's on anyway. Well, I want you guys to think about something here. There's a lesson here. You guys saw how fast that fire went up and you probably saw equally as fast how fire, fast that fire went down. And that's how quickly you can lose your fire here. Oh, I love coming out of my shelter now. Anytime I make a shelter, I'm just like so pumped about it. And uh, we got a light, it's a light snow. It's not a, it's not a major snow, it's a light snow. So I'm just gonna spend the next, well, till dark at least, looking around and see what I can't find. I'm gonna have to probably switch over to GoPro so that I can have my two hands free. <laughs> but uh, there could be a red squirrel hanging out almost anywhere in here. 
I do hear them chattering at me every once in a while. So I gotta get up in the thick stuff. So I'm gonna head down into the swamp here and hope we don't kick one up. I've got the GoPro, you can see there, mounted on the camera. All right, well, I can't be carrying you guys around, sorry. <laughs> it's too much, too much to handle. So I got the GoPro kind of mounted here at the end of the gun. So I get this fired up and uh, hopefully that gives you guys a pretty decent perspective. How's that look? Can you guys see me? Hello. <laughs> what does it look like? I'm gonna aim it down just a touch. <laughs> How's that for first person perspective? That looks pretty good. All right, well, here we go. Off into the bush. Wish me luck. I'm just gonna work these perimeters here, kicking up whatever I can along the way. See if we can't find some tracks here. Well, nothing there. I'm gonna circle back again. I don't wanna to get too far away from my camp because I, I really don't wanna get lost. Let's get in the thick stuff. The wind's starting to pick up, which means we're, we're gonna be in for a rough night. We don't uh, pick something up. I see lots of tracks in here in and around under the trees and everything. Just gonna keep my eyes open. These are nothing like snowshoe hair. They, uh, they don't like to sit too, too long. So you gotta kinda kick them up and uh, get ready to shoot. In hindsight, I probably should've went with my 12 gauge for this challenge. <laughs> but uh, I got 10 rounds in this gun, so I fully intend to use them all if I have to. Oh. This stick stuff, this is like prime right in here. In the dogwood, the blown down trees. I'm getting on a track up here. A nice used trail. I can see coming through here. Where is it gonna end up? That's the question. Oh, we really need a, I need a dog. <laughs> For a dogger. Oh, Doing this thick stuff here. There's one. It's under the log. Oh, I don't know if I got him. Yeah, he popped out. He popped out. But he's oh, he's going down. <laughs> I'm going down too. Oh, okay. Buried right up to my waist. Oh. Well, that was a lot of dog and I can see him there. He's dead. He's just twitching now, so I'll give him a, I'll give him a second <laughs> and get out of here. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's switch you guys. Well, actually, I'll just, I'll hold you guys by hand. That way I'm not waving the gun around everywhere. Just give me a second here. Oh, you can see the tracks here. Kind of scooched out there. Pop, pop, pop. And I crushed him again, right? <laughs> just as he was coming out of here. <laughs> there we go. Check this guy out. <laughs> I don't know where I got him, but I got him. And that's kind of all that matters, right? <laughs> that's a nice little cottontail. Actually, that's on the bigger side of a cottontail. My experience with cottontails is they're almost as big as a uh, uh, squirrel some of the times, but you know by the time we get this guy cleaned out he might end up being about the same Let's get out of this thick stuff again. Oh my god. We're out in the open I left my camera here running <laughs> There you go. Oh, oh, what do you think of that guys? <laughs> I got myself a cottontail <laughs> Man, I never thought that this was gonna turn out like this. <laughs> Here I am, man. Made it happen. I got a fire from scratch. I got myself a fresh bunny. Oh, oh, it's leaking. Ew. <laughs> Ew, that's gray. That's weird, man. Gray pee everywhere. 
at least I didn't uh, I didn't get it on me so that's good but uh, check it out hey it's delicious bunny <laughs> yes oh, there we go there we go oh, I guess I got it behind the neck cuz uh, it's making a bit of a mess now I'll get that cleaned up and yeah, head back to camp <laughs> How's that for an experience? <laughs> oh, there we go, back at camp. Oh, I think I need a break. <laughs> I think I deserve a break. Oh, get tucked in here. Let's keep that there. Safety's on, okay. Whew. All right. Well, I think I'll go collect, uh, well, in a minute, I'm gonna collect my thoughts here, but <laughs> I'm gonna go collect a stick so that when I got this guy cleaned, I can uh, throw him straight up on the fire. Of course, we got only the axe to work with here, so you think that might be tricky, but I'll, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you a trick for the trickiness, so you guys get a, an idea of what you can do uh, with small game as far as cleaning them without, you know, any tools at all. And I know that small game has pretty thin skin, especially when you catch it right away. It gets fresh. You can actually tear it apart. So what I'm going to do, pretty simply, I'm going to cut the feet off all four and then I'm going to cut the head off and that's going to make it a lot easier so I'm just going to grab the center body and just pull as hard as I can both ways to kind of uh, undress it like a sock but I want to make it I want to make a break in the middle so that I can pull back one way and then the other and then it should just come off both sides and uh, once I get that done in order to get the, the guts out it's going to be kind of tricky um, but I think I can manage as long as I can get through that little barrier I should be able to slice through so we'll see how it goes. So there we go, there's our dinner, Mr. Cottontail Rabbit. So no part of this rabbit's gonna go to waste. I'm gonna keep as much as I can. I'm gonna keep the heart, the liver, uh, the lungs are a little bit spongy and the digestive system, eh, not so good. We have eaten the stomach of a snowshoe hare before and it's not all that bad, but this was a summer hare and it was of course eating mostly salad. Right now they'll be mostly eating what they've eaten before, you know, like re-ingesting the things. Uh, the poop and so obviously I don't want to be doing any of that too and there's there's nothing here that's uh, super nutritious that they could be vacuuming up that I can make use with uh, I'm also going to keep the fur and all the organs and all that stuff and I'm going to use that for coyote bait so this rabbit is actually going to be used 100% over again as much as I possibly can so nothing's going to be wasted here I can't believe I was able to actually make a fire from scratch with a bow drill and actually get something to eat all in one challenge. As you know, I've done a bunch of these no food, no water, no shelter survival challenges and they haven't always worked. Uh, the time I tried to get a squirrel snaring and try to catch a coyote, they didn't work. Turn it right now and just, just rotate it in the snow. It's kind of caught in a couple logs over there, really simple. Sometimes it's tricky to get it to hold just where you want it, but usually with enough fiddling around you can manage to do that. So just want to get, you know, the heat on that one leg, so it's the low leg, and I can turn it and get on the other leg. I don't need so much, so much heat on uh, the front legs. We've got a nice bed of coals there now. Let's make sure that we keep that fire lit. We don't have to restart the whole process. Must be getting close to springtime because I hear tons of animal activity. Or maybe just that, that uh, little bit of a storm, I guess, or the weather patterns are kind of shifting. I hear birds everywhere. And I hear a uh, squirrel, it sounds like it's getting closer. So animals really do start to move as their temperatures increase. Keep hearing those crows. If one lands in a tree, I'll take a crack at it. They're pretty smart about it though. 
I think they know the safe distances. <laughs> and I want to get that fire going back again, but I don't want to. I don't want to get that fire get going too hot again because I think the rabbit's pretty much done here. So I think we're gonna we're gonna take it off and then we're gonna get that fire going. And then any parts of that, oh my mouth is watering. Any parts of that that's not cooked, we could just throw it back on. So make sure we take this apart. Oh, it's warm. I'm gonna be at the ready in case those crows. You know, I think they're what's drawing their attention is actually where I cleaned that rabbit. I think they're smelling like they, they got a really really good sense of smell. So I think that's like they they're close and they want to come in. <laughs> I love this man. How awesome is that? They, they can't see me in here. If one lands like I clean that rabbit just over here. Well we'll give this axe a good cleaning. <laughs> clean as I can get it anyway. I add a little bit more wadobo on there for sure. Oh, it's perfectly cooked. That looks freaking delicious. Ooh, it's hot still. I gotta saw more of that off. I gotta watch the bones. That's the, that's the problem with cutting the feet off and such is that you're always gonna have really sharp bone edges. So you gotta make sure you don't stab yourself. Ooh. That is super hot. No utensils. We're eating like we're eating like a caveman. Whew. Okay, one more saw. One more saw. Oh, there we go. Nice chunk of meat. I actually missed all the part with the wadobo, so I gotta I gotta add a little bit more. And anything I miss can go down in the cheeks. There we go. Look at that. That's a nice, nicely cooked piece of meat it's nice and tender I don't think it's gonna be too chewy and to get the focus back there we go oh that's so good mmm you know what makes it taste better is just all that work that went into it mmm oh my god that is good it is chewy I'm, I'm gonna give it that I actually got in the habit of aging my wild meat. That's the way to get rid of a lot of the chewiness. Cooking it like this, it's gonna be chewy. It's just a fact of life. But if you wanna have some really, really good, like squirrel meat or hare meat or goose meat or anything like this, what you do, wrap it with the fur on. Fur on, do not take the fur off. Make sure there's no gut cavity, spillage or anything like that. Wrap it in a piece of newspaper put it in a Ziploc bag or grocery bag or anything like that. Leave it in the fridge for seven to nine days. That's gonna start the breakdown of the meat and the muscle fibers. You can probably wait a little bit longer than that. The refrigerator is actually the perfect temperature for aging meat. Now, if you don't wanna eat it in seven to nine days, cause you know, you, you may not wanna wait that long or you're going away or anything like that. Wrap it up in newspaper, whatever. Put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. And seven to nine days before you want to eat it, do the same process. I kind of did this by accident a few times. And let me tell you, the meat turned out so much more tender. Even for wild game, it was like you didn't have to cook it any way in particular. Normally for a cottontail, you would stew it. So that's what's making it chewy right now. You need to, you need to be rough on that meat. <laughs> if you want it to be tender, if you get what I'm saying. But this is entirely edible. It's gonna take more work for me, but that's okay, because it's more time for me to enjoy it. Oh, I feel like this is, this is the rabbit hole now. <laughs> I feel like I've become one. It's called the rabbit hole survival challenge. I feel like this is like a little den to come back in every time. <laughs> just for the security. The sun is just hitting the top of the trees. That tells me it's probably about an hour or so of light left. And uh, I ate all the back straps off of this rabbit. The back straps were the best part, man. Like if you grab, same thing on a deer or any other animal. If you grab here and you pinch, you can pull all that out. It's the most tender part. I haven't eaten uh, the front legs yet. 
because um, they're, they're going to be the chewiest. I got a little bit of bacon here. But I get hungry after I chop that wood, that's for sure. Calories in a, a lean cottontail like this doesn't go very far. But make the most of it, right? It's cold now. <laughs> Not as good as it was before, but it's still edible. That's all you do though when you survive is just keep pulling pieces off. You know, you can reheat it. If I had a pot, I can make some stew. This would be good for stew right now. Good consistency. But I'll just leave that here. I'm not worried about any animals coming in. Perfect place for it. Keeps it out of the ground, keeps it out of the dirt. Let that fire restart and I'll tuck in for the night. What do you guys think about this challenge? You think you could do it? Think you can pull it off? The one tool. The one tool. Pains me a little bit to admit that I would pick the ax as the one tool for survival. I'm a saw guy, but you can't just make it with a saw. It would have been impossible for me to make that bow drill set with a saw. And cut wood for sure. I think a wood's more um, a saw is more efficient for cutting wood than is an axe. Um, I'm not convinced entirely though, because obviously you can get through some bigger stuff pretty quickly. So if you're burning big, heavy trees, axe can make pretty short work of it. Uh, but the saw just seems like it's just, it moves less wood. You know what I mean? Less force overall to get through a piece of wood. But I don't know, maybe somebody's done the maybe somebody's done the math on that to figure out what's more efficient, a saw or an axe. I think it's probably a saw, personally. Well, I think we did good on this challenge. I'm impressed by it. We've got tons of wood now. And uh Yeah, I mean, hey, I'm surprised everything worked out. Oh, I'm just trying to beat the last little bit of light left. I don't know if you can beat the last light, but the sun's about to set there. And I don't want to be without wood. I did cut a big log here that was close to the shelter. But that's okay. Should save that in case there's an emergency. But I'm in the I'm in the woods here, and there's wood everywhere. And uh, that was easy pickings. So I'll probably cut this one behind me in two, and throw it on the fire. And then overnight, it'll it'll break apart as it burns. And we're gonna tuck in. I'm gonna get my jacket on. Warm now. And I made a pretty good dent in that rabbit. Got a little bit left, so I keep snacking on. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I can cut wood or eat rabbit. <laughs> I got some options. And what do you guys think of this? What do you guys think of this survival challenge? I think we did pretty good. I'm super pumped that uh, you know, everything worked out and you guys will have to let me know what kind of uh, challenges you want me to do next. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have been asking to do like a winter survival challenge and I've been talking a little bit with Adam Stu and we kind of have a loose idea of what we can put together for that type of challenge. It's obviously really tricky to find enough food. There's a cottontail. There's a freaking cottontail just jumped out of the woods. Oh. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> Check it out, guys. <laughs> what the heck is going on? I freaking... I got a cottontail. I got another one. <laughs> How crazy is that? I... He 
to you like literally just bounded across right there right in front <laughs> i don't think my second shot did anything but he kind of i want i didn't wasn't going to take a chance but the gun didn't fire right away but here we go <laughs> we got ourselves some freaking breakfast how awesome is that <sighs> this guy's not as big as the other one but uh He'll eat all the same. <laughs> oh, he's about the size of uh, maybe two squirrels. Maybe that's why he wasn't the brightest. <laughs> he came right out. Oh my gosh. Well, there's a, that's the reason you keep your gun close by at all times. <laughs> Especially at last light, because you never know. You never know really what's gonna move around. <laughs> could be a coyote come through here or you know could be a, a crow come land on one of the trees or or anything really a turkey could come by although they're not in season but <laughs> always be ready and if you guys are doing some act like you know passive snaring or trapping or anything like that what you want to do obviously is uh, be hunting on your way to and from and your setup because you, you never know <laughs> that's that's proof right there we got we got ourselves some breakfast man <laughs> oh i can't believe that man if the camera wasn't here running i don't know if you guys would either <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is insane <laughs> Oh my god, I don't what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the winter survival challenge. On that note, <laughs> yeah, we'll see if I can put it together. I'm also talking with Jeremy too. We want to go try to trap a beaver, but uh the prospects of that are a little bit slim right now. We uh you know we thought there might be in one of uh in the ponds nearby him, but uh, he went scouting, he didn't see anything, so but I do want to try that. So if we can manage to, oh, that's one of the ones we're going to do. <laughs> can you believe that? <laughs> can you believe that? I mean, I still have, I still have cotton tail right here to eat. <laughs> Man, this is thriving. I'll tell you what. All right, well, let's get that fire blazing so I can tuck in for the night. I feel nice and warm now, but maybe that's just because I... <laughs> all the excitement. <laughs> crazy one tool survival challenge <laughs> that's a home run in my books gonna hunker down here I don't know if I'll probably be up a couple times to stoke the fire and whatever which is fine that's the idea behind this one this is like under the tree kind of deal where you know you're not you're not risking uh, catching everything on fire by having the fire close to your shelter so you can do things a couple different ways but this is the design by this one well guys there's not much light left so probably a good time to say good night and uh, Catch you guys on the next one. I don't care if you subscribe, but I really do appreciate having you along. <laughs>